welcome back and thank you for staying with us. In his Independence Day speech, the president reiterated his commitment to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. That's by 2030. That's what we're going to be looking at in this segment. And we have with us um, Mr. Yowa Apera, National Social Safety Nets Coordinating Office of the National Safety Nets Coordinating Office. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. We also expect uh, Noroa Edokwolo, a business development consultant, to join us before the end of this segment. Mr. Apera. Yes. A hundred million people out of poverty in 10 years, that's in 2030. Yeah. What do you think of that? Um, should I call it an ambition? You will call it an ambition. You can also call it a statement of fact if uh, the right investment is put in place. And indeed, the government of today is putting in place the right investment. If, you said. Yes. Right. So the president has made some suggestions as to how he wants to go about it. And yes. you said, if the right things are put in place, this is actually possible. Yes. So what should we be expecting to lift this 100 million people out of poverty in the next 10 years? First, uh, we'll start with effective uh, planning and targeting of the... Uh, poor and vulnerable uh, across um, a whole spectrum of our socioeconomic lives. What the president has done and the current administration um, is um, beginning to put the right investment into uh, poverty uh, alleviation programs, starting with effective targeting of the poor and vulnerable by establishing for the first time, uh, a social register of poor and vulnerable that targets actual poor and vulnerable that are determined by their communities. Now, and other programs that they put in place, let's talk um, maybe, for instance, the cash transfer program that's paying about 1 million Nigerians. You say that is small. That is uh, compared to 82 million poor Nigerians. Which one is that? The trader money? No, the cash transfer. That is a conditional cash transfer. Okay. Targets one million people. But let's let us let us look at that, for example, as a positive step or investment in the right direction. It's paying one million people five thousand naira a month. That's five thousand naira times one million gives you around um, five billion naira. In the month, that's five billion naira injected into the economy, our local economy at once. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from the families of these people or folks that get five thousand naira, it stimulates demand. It's not a consumption, but stimulates demand. That means the trader uh, in the market gets business because there's that money in there, and then that multiply effect uh, go round and round. But, but Mr. Mr. Perra. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, little is better than nothing at all, mm. but uh, in today's economy, how much can 5,000 Naira do for anybody? Quite a lot. Um, a poor Joe on the street that, I mean, we all have villages. We can all relate with this. You relate with the fact that when you go to your village, sometimes in some places, um, someone will not see 2,000 Naira in close to six months. But you're giving 5,000 Naira consistently every month. So we pay 10,000 Naira every two months. This is consistent. It comes to them every single month. Now, some of these cash transfer programs and people, some of the success stories we've had, is that they've saved money. And we have in excess of about 823 million Naira in excess of savings in these savings groups across the country. We have success stories, yes, from 5,000 They are Naira. saving out of the 5,000 Yes, Naira. you'll be shocked. But that's the fact. And so what do they eat? They, of course, they feed with it. So, uh, you see, the, the interesting thing is um, when, you, when, when you sit from the point of view of us here and you look at what you take to the market, right, um, versus um, a poor folk, 
there in um, on the streets or in the villages and what he takes to the market, you know the buying power is not the same, right? He can take 500 naira and make a pot of soup. You want to make a pot of soup, you maybe use uh, 50,000 naira no. by, by your standard. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no. Okay, but um, Mr. Perra, yeah. so a million people across the country every month get 5,000, that's what you said, right? Yes. Okay, in, in talking about ending poverty in 10 years, the, I mean, it's generally said that the, the poor of the poor live below a dollar a day. And a dollar going by the official <laughs> rate is over 300 naira to a dollar. Mm -hmm. So if that's... 450 you know, naira. If you're getting, <clears throat> if you're giving out 5,000 naira every month um, to a particular individual, it still doesn't make up to a dollar a day. That person's spending... Again, less than a dollar a day. Of course. So, if you, now you're doing, you're paying out five million naira to a million, five thousand. That's five billion every month to a million people. That's what's going on. How long would it take to get a hundred million people out of poverty? Okay. Earning that. So first, let's let's clear the air that the five, the one million people cash transfer has the capacity to grow to two million and it's growing every day, right? Um, but that is just one out of many investments in the sector. So deliberately you have also the school feeding program by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. By the way, I am under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. So you have the school feeding program that is feeding our children but providing income to our women, local women, who are cooks, they in turn are buying local grown food, thereby mopping up our agricultural excesses, putting income in the hands of the family. Now, you have close to 8 million or so copies being fed around the country. You have, you have well over 3,000 cooks providing these meals, and they are being paid... Um, about 7,000 naira or so, 75 naira per, uh, per, per, per child. Now, every cook we get an average of 75,000 naira in a month. Now, this is money in the hands of this cook, over 3,000 of them. They, in turn, are buying from farmers. So think about the multiplier effect, right? When you pull this into the 1 million people question, that is a significant amount of money. Now, let's talk about um, G, trader money, market money that gives as little as 10,000, but 20,000. 10,000 might be small, but 10,000 injected into an Akara woman's business. It's huge investment that improves it. Now, talk about the multiplier of effect of that. Well over 3,000 Nigerians are benefiting from cash transfer. Uh, the, the, the Jeep. Now, with those 10,000 10, naira loan, that they have means that we increase, for instance, the stock of beans. Mm. Now, when they increase the stock of beans, that goes to increase the production of beans because the farmer needs to produce beans to meet up that demand. You know, the, so the multiply effect is huge. Fantastic views, fantastic initiatives, nice initiatives. But the question is the sustainability part of it. In 10 years from now, is there, is there a law backing this so that should the administration change? We're not looking at uh, would the next set of um, mm. people going to the office continue this. It's, it's a given. It is there. And so in 10 years, we are sure that this thing is building up. It's ramping up. Yes, it was a million people last, last month or two million last month. It's gone up to five million. It's going up every month. So we have more people getting conditional cash transfer. We have people getting money ingested into their business side, injected. So eventually, in that 10 years, it's a done deal. Yes. Um, so, so again, I would say the administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari has by far um, uh, invested uh, in positively in alleviating poverty from some of the, uh, if we go back history. But to say about sustainability, you can sustain an initiative in one or two ways. One, establish a law that institutionalize it and keep it there. And the government has taken the right step. The right step is to create a ministry that will institutionalize those programs with implementation, provide oversight and supervision, and, pro 
and then put in place policies that are solid and coherent to push towards law. And the National Assembly it's working well, should be working on the law with the ministry, right? That's one way. The other way is by resort. You establish the results in a way and manner that it becomes, as it is, and rightly so, a right. And the vice president of this country earlier last year, January, said social protection is actually a right of Nigerians. Mm. Now, where you socialize these programs, a government coming becomes very unpopular if it stops it. Mm. So you socialize it in the results. And the results that are happening now, it's establishing that legitimacy, that transparency or mm. integrity. Now let's come to where I, I oversee. We've started by developing a social register of poor and vulnerable. This register is developed by the community members themselves, wherein the community members will sit in a focal group discussion, the male, the female, and the youth, they will define for themselves what poverty means. And by that definition, they will then identify the poor and vulnerable households in their, in their community. Mm -hmm. Once they do that and they agree on a common list, they sign off on that list, the community take ownership. A mm -hmm. copy of that list is in the community. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we have done this in 64,000 communities across the country in all 37 states and we're counting by the day. So if you go to that community, they will show you the list. So when you, ca you come with cash transfer to pay, the community know who and who they selected. So mm -hmm. they know that only these people collect the cash. So they mm -hmm. hold the system accountable. Okay. Now it's building confidence in it. Now state governments are seriously binding. The Lagos state governor, just uh, a week or two ago in the executive uh, council, let Maybe me just, let me just please just hold your thoughts. We'll come back to pick it up from this point. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm I'm in, impressed. Sixty four thousand communities covered across the country. Social register of poor and vulnerable. But if I, as an individual or a corporate, wanted to even invest, where do I find that list to say I want to support what government is doing for these communities? So we'll, we'll pick it up from there. We won't come back from this break. Thank you for staying with us. We've been joined by Mr. Noroi Dokbolo, a business development consultant. Um, thank you for joining us. Mr. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, before you came in, Mr. Per was talking about what they've been doing. And, and I asked a question. I said, um, impressive. So at least 64,000 communities in the country, across the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT, have selected the people they consider, as you say, the poor and vulnerable. Okay. To totaling 19.6 million people. Totaling 19.6 million across people. Across the nation. Okay. So if that be the case, I am a private concern and I want to support what government is doing. Maybe I feel like the 5,000 being given to these people is not, is not good enough. I want to support that. Where do I find that list? The list is with us, uh, the National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office, NASCO. Um, the list is available. Uh, what you do is once you approach me, uh, <laughs> yeah. say that uh, but if we, we just need to sign a memorandum of understanding with you, okay. stating very clearly what you need this data for and what the purpose is, mm -hmm. and the fact that you would need to you will create a feedback loop for you to feed me back on what you meet in the field and, so and enroll basically them. It's, so that you can monitor what's happening. Yes. So and the list so you, is not, it's not on any website. The list, the detailed list is on a server, but it's not on a website for you to access the name for data security laws. Okay. okay. But you can assess the aggregate figures okay. per state and per community on our website. Okay. Is any of that happening at the moment? Are any private individuals or private companies supporting the effort? Yes, so last week, um, the Honorable Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and uh, Social Development, actually on Monday, uh, no, Tuesday, this week, he was in Lagos to launch the UNDP uh, cash transfer. Now, UNDP, it, it's an international event, you will say, but if mined from the social register, they are targeting a, a 10... Uh, 10 community hotspots. You know, NCDC did announce some local government that were mm. hotspots for the disease. Mm. And so they got money to do 
cash transfer across these hotspot communities targeting 44,000 mm. people. And in Lagos here, they started with about 3,000 uh, of them in some of the communities that were hotspot communities that were likely to be locked down again because of the spread of, of the, the pandemic. pandemic. Okay. So UNDP is mining. Um, we all also have other concerns that are mining and every any or every private individual is free to come. Okay. So the minister, sorry, just one minute. Mm -hmm. The minister convened the round table on zero hunger. And it's a collection of businesses uh, in the country that wants to intervene at the pandemic. And what we have just done with them is to clearly give them a map. And what we also do is we collect information in every community so we know the proximity of these poor uh, individuals or families to good road, water, electricity, schools, network strength, GSM network strength. So we, we did filter all of this information out to them. So it helps them plan. If I want to give food to Community X, do I need to prepare for boats? Or do I need to go on foot or get a donkey or get yeah, a bicycle yeah. and stuff like that? So this is the information that we have within mm. the social register for access. You know, I, I will come back to you because of something you said earlier about people saving 2000 from the 5000 <laughs> that, that they are paid monthly. That's amazing. What, where do you get your data? Is it verifiable? Because we will also want to check. I mean, if I get 5000 now, or someone in my community gets 5000 I still want, but hold on, hold your horses, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Nora, so 100 million people out of poverty. Now, this is what they are doing so far. So 19 million have already been selected as a pound vulnerable, selected by their communities. They're already doing trader money. They are giving the conditional cash transfer. They are doing market money. They are doing other things, partnering with some people like the UNDP, as you talked about. Is it, are these steps, are these the steps for a business development consultant, for instance, that should be taken in moving people out? Thank you very much. Um, I think the first thing I'll say is that one should um, um, recognize the efforts that government is making um, in this direction and to um, applaud them uh, you know, for the very fact that these initiatives exist. Um, what I would say is, can it be more effective? I think yes. Can, so the president talked about the, <clears throat> the, the Chinese model. Uh, so what did the Chinese do? Part of what they did is what they're doing, getting money into the hands of those that really need the money at the lowest levels. Assuming that that is being done, you know, as, as you have said, unfortunately... Justiciably. Yes, thank you, that's the word. In, in the Nigerian context, you must always, you know, put those things in um, open and close for obvious reasons. Not you as a person, but, you know, we're all Nigerians. So, of course, of course, so yeah. we have that to deal with. So, but let's assume that that is being done to some extent. That's a good thing. So what does the Chinese do? Infrastructure. All right? What does they do? They fought anti-corruption. They fought corruption. Now, for us in Nigeria, I would say that um, in addition to whatever they are doing, there are two things that we keep coming back to that if we don't deal with, will sabotage no matter how good. Oh, you efforts. must be hearing the news recently of the um, food program. It's not my money, it's your money, it's somebody's account. I don't know if you're getting it. Yeah. So the, the fight against corruption has to be such that these plans actually manifest. That's one. Two... Uh, there's a young man that attended a training that I organized, you know, business plan writing. And then after that, he got a loan, and I'm not going to mention the name, from one of the government, you know, outlets for feeding. You know, so you, you write a business plan, it's approved, then you take it to them, and then you get the loan. So the boy got the loan on paper, all right? When he came to disbursement, strange things started happening. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm talking about, that corruption is still alive and well. That's one. Two, and, and this is so critical. If we do not do a value orientation or reorientation for our people, you know, it's because the typical mindset is this is whatever I can grab, let me grab it. So I, I wish that side by side what you are doing, the fight against corruption is real um, and it's been done properly. I wish that there was also a deliberate plan to reorientate Nigerians. I mean, in a country where... Leko, 
is what we are celebrating. All right? Yeah. So it tells you, you know, I was going home yesterday and I saw some young men uh, in a gambling joint. And that gambling joint is jam-packed from morning till night. Mm. And there are multitudes of those kind like of that. joints all across the country. So that the, the, the desire to, <clears throat> to work, you know, labor, you know, Isha Agbe, Isha Elenwa, mm. remember that song we mm. sing in school? It's not there anymore. So government needs to help itself by addressing anti-corruption, infrastructure, and values reorientation. Until uh -huh. those three things are done, you know, um, we would discuss this in a short while after now, and some of these things that are like the foundations, mm. if they're not well sorted, it might affect what they're planning, trying to do. Staying with you, Norua, it's interesting that you had to bring in that song because agriculture is one of the things that the president is talking about. Um, how do you think, because people are running to the cities now, nobody wants to stay in the rural areas anymore. Everybody wants to be in the urban center. So who is going to stay back and farm? Are there any suggested incentives to make people farm? There's 200 million of us. If we can't feed ourselves, then we're in trouble, Norwa. Very true. Incidentally also, I have a few, you know, some investments in agriculture. We had to close down a multi-million naira, you know, uh, farm because we couldn't get the right people to employ. We couldn't get a farm manager that had experience to run it. So I was just thinking to myself, youth core, I don't know if you're getting it. Why don't we incorporate into youth core vocational skills, plumbing, electrical, you know, installations, mm -hmm. basic farming, etc. So that when they finish that one year, they're not looking for a job. They themselves become creators of jobs. I don't know if you're getting it. Yeah. Imagine that that one year, you know, you divide them, you go to plumbing, you go to electrical works. There's a huge deficit in building. But guess what? Hardly would you find a good Nigerian uh, um, Artisan. Artisan. Yeah, right. Artisan would you find? Yeah. So, you know, agriculture, the building uh, sector, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are some of the areas where we can actually, you know, begin to, first of all, it starts with the mind. Uh, if you don't change the setting up here, it will be an uphill task to get any other thing really done with people. So we must start with, you know, the reorientation. The mm. value systems must be, you know, we must begin to speak and act and do in such a way as to support the, the, so if, if we ask now, what is the Nigerian value system, for example? It would be a difficult question to answer. So, yes, agriculture is a good place, but also the building industry, is, there's, there's a huge deficit of skilled... At, imagine a, an educated plumber. Imagine an educated, you know, um, electrical person. Now, Rua, we know an architect who actually left architecture to study plumbing. That's it. And he says that the corrections he's had to make in mansions in Lagos mm -hmm. is just mind-boggling. That's the point we're he trying to make. He prefers to be a plumber than plumber. to be an architect. That's it. So NYC, because that's a good catchment area, can be, you know, so that they finish the orientation, then you move them into vocational skills. When they come out of that place, they, 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 those who are getting the jobs don't know what they're doing. So you end up, you build this lovely house, you, on, you know, you, you put on the light, it's not on. I mean, it doesn't come on, on. You the switch tap, on the tap. The tap pops. You know, pops. The water is not running. <laughs> you know, and then you have to break. So, I mean, it, there's a huge opportunity for, for you know, um, uh, people to be. But empowered. for the Nigerian to say he's a plumber is a thing to be ashamed of, isn't it? That's part of the orientation, orientation. that must take place. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Perra, yes. It's, as they say, you have your job cut out for you. Because when the president makes that statement, the statements like that, it is your unit that tends to now have to get down and run with it. Yeah. So, with the, what you're doing now, some people are tweeting here that then they don't have any data. They're not seeing that. They're not seeing, they don't know anybody who's benefiting from that. So that's why I asked the question about, is there a place where this information is published so that they can go there and see for themselves yeah. and then verify these things you're seeing? Yeah. But, I mean, first, all, all, we are on our social uh, media handle, uh, NASCO Nigeria. 
Um, That's uh, N A double S. Yeah, N A double S. Yeah, C O. Okay. Uh, NASCO, once you put it there, you'll find, you say it clearly. Uh, so we, we, we give regular updates on the social register. So every month we come up with the, the figures across the country, across the state. At the moment, the social register has identified 4.6 million uh, poor and vulnerable households made up of 9.7 million individuals across the across uh, the country. And we can give you these figures by the community, by political word, so it's 64,000 communities, 6,506 political words, 545 local governments in 37 states, that's 36 mm. states, and FCT Abuja. We have that database, and the aggregate numbers are published every month. Now, I will agree with you first, and Nigerians, that um, as a government, and as a government, it will don't do so much with communication and socializing our work, but we are gradually coming, waking up or coming to the fact that we need to do more in terms of socializing some of the huge investment of beautiful work that government is doing. You ask the question about what 5,000 can do. I will give you another example. In Jigawa State, in a village, women that are collecting this 5,000 a month saved the money and bought a 350,000 naira car to help the villagers convey pregnant women to uh, the local government uh, hospital for delivery. Can you beat that? Now, these are initiatives that they, they are taking themselves from the money that we, 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 we give them every month. Now, these kind of stories are banned, but do we know about them? The, 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 the answer will be, for those who are on social media, might, but for others, uh, won. We but know about that story. We, we it, reported on it. You reported that story. Brilliant. Now, if you go to Lagos State Ministry of Planning on the third floor, the State Operations Coordinating Unit, SUKO, is there, and it's there in every state under the Ministry of Planning, supervised by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Planning. You will find details of the Lagos State Social Register the communities they have been in so far, the local governments, and the people they have registered uh, so far as identified by their communities. And then when you come back to us, our, uh, our website, uh, NAPS, N-A-S-S-P dot uh, uh, gov you will find this record that is that interactive. Now, we, 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 we were setting up our MIS system that will be far more interactive. And when it comes on stream in the next one or two weeks, you can actually, with the map, well articulated, you can get to see the communities. When you click on, say, a local government, you see the number of communities. When you click on a community, you see the basic figures there. Total number of poor people identifying that community, mm. what amenities there, whether you assess that community by a footpath or a road, a mm. motorized road or a boat, you okay. see those kind of basic features. That helps people interact with it, private sector to engage with. Okay. And then we also have, we are easily accessible at any time of the day that you get in touch. We can then uh, guide you through accessing this data uh, for any intervention. That's that for the okay. purpose for... I, I want to read this tweet because somebody here was very skeptical and says... Um, how you will believe that man saying people in villages are saving out of 5K baffles me without any verifiable data. I hope he's been able to convince you that this thing is actually happening because he's told you what, they, what some of them have actually come together and done with the money. I mean, and channels, channels covered com the, confirmed covered that it. they actually covered the event where the car was launched. So okay, all this has uh, merit. Even, even though that, that's <laughs> part of people providing a vehicle to get their people to the hospital. Mm. That's what government's supposed to be doing as well. But they did that for themselves. Again, this matter of 100 million out of poverty. How achievable? I mean, Norah talked about agriculture. The, gov the president talked about agriculture. What you're doing, you're giving monies to people. Yes. Are they getting a reorientation? Tunde Arugumati says, to make any progress in the quest to end poverty in 10 years, Nigeria must adopt a zero-tolerance-to-poverty mindset that eliminates the worsening 
begging syndrome and takes actions beyond social safety net that boost productivity, vast skills, resource base, and policy development. What about mindset? Is it just enough to give out money? No. So what we do, we do a cash plus. And this is, we, we accompany the cash we give to, with some basic education in savings, in investments, um, in health, nutrition, uh, basic environmental issues and agriculture. Okay, sorry. We are also that. working with the World Bank to also pilot to bring the sets that. of livelihoods that takes these beneficiaries through a mentorship scheme that then pro uh, provides them the necessary skills now, right, to start would, up a business. Would that make a difference for one who is training people? Yes, it will. Um, but like we are all identifying that um, the things that have been done now, cash in hand, is wonderful. But if the produce from that small village gets rotten instead of getting to the closest market. market. Mm. So what I would say is that your team, from what you are saying, seems to be doing a great job. But your team needs to be complemented by other teams. Very true. The other things must be in place because there's no way you can deliver all alone. I don't know if you're getting it. So, yeah. so you, yeah. you pick it up from that point mm. about delivering on all of these things. So we'll come back from this break. Do stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Um, Nova, you're talking about what they need to do. Yes, cash is good, but beyond cash, mindset, market My, Mindset, infrastructure, basic infrastructure. You know what I mean? Such that, I remember, um, what was it? Um, there was one that actually, you know, uh, where the roads were built, in, you know, in all... Uh, not Yes. Dipri. Was it Yes. Yeah, one Dipri. of those things. So, so yeah. we need to, so that, you know, it's, like I said, I'm in the agriculture space. Sometimes the bulk of the produce gets rotten right there in the farm because of transportation, just to get it from there to the nearest marketplace to sell. So things must go, you know, a couple of things have to go pari passo. So what you are doing on the one hand, um, uh, infrastructure on the one hand, um, genuine fight against corruption on the one hand, and also um, uh, human capital development. We're talking about, you know, farm hands, farm managers, you know, um, you know, building the building industry so that the young people, because our young people are future, they are jobless, they are angry, and that's dangerous. Mm. And many of them are not even in this your catchment area because they're not in the villages. They've mm -hmm. all moved to the, to the urban center. centers and they're jobless, they're angry, and they can't even hold down a job because they don't have the right skills. So as you are dealing with those really ultra poor in those places, somebody must be looking at the people in the cities who are probably more, um, you know, their fuses are probably closer to, you know, than, yeah. So I think that's something to, to look at. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Now, um, I think two years ago, government developed the uh, harness, uh, harvesting uh, Nigeria's demographic dividends, investing in the youth across that spectrum. Um, and some of some of the initiatives, the Empower, um, and others are also a product of some of those uh, thoughts. But I agree with you. We need to invest more, and perhaps we also need to begin to invest in our cognitive capital. Starts with good food, because most of our youth now grow up malnourished, mm -hmm. and so their cognitive development it's a bit. Shaking, mm. yeah, and so they don't engage. I mean, okay. I mean, positively. Mm. When we were growing up, as young as I am, I come from a village called Agasha, right, in Goma local government of Benue State. We are rich in gravel, so we dig the ground or pull gravel. I we used to when I finish my secondary school, I go back to the village. I'll dig uh, the gravel, make up a trip of uh, gravel. Then it was all six hundred naira load on the tipper and I'll make the money to come back to school and, and be a big boy in school. How many of your youths are doing that now? Well, well that's, that's another side of it. Some will say that would also help to destroy the environment. If we have every youth going ahead to do this kind of digging, and we're talking about protecting the environment. More. Of course, we so that's another the, conversation. The we're, going to the, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have the Minister of Environment here tell us more about that. But let me read this tweet as we wind down, closing statements here. Um, Wagna Wanga Ubebe says, how does a government claiming to tackle poverty suddenly sack and throw away 
400,000 youth previously engaged in the Empire program to the streets without any concrete plan for them. That's what number two. Um, Victoria's Man at Victoria's Man says, I was selected for this program last year in my community at Toja Estate, Oshobo. They only enrolled us, so the program took our pictures. I'm yet to receive one naira. Mr. Iowa, what happened to community, communities that have not received any monies in this? And finally, from uh, Inyobong says, if it were that easy to get these figures of the very poor Nigerians, you will answer that one. It says, why, is, why has it been difficult to conduct population census in all these years? Okay, let me take the, the first question on around Empower. So government in engaging 500,000 youth told them you're, you only have a stay on the program for two years. They give you 30,000 Naira stipend and they encourage you, they give you, uh, they, they, they lecture you, you have modules that you go through and you're expected to then take your destiny into your hands and invest. Indeed, out of the 500,000, close to 170 thousand of these youth have started businesses of their own. Some fish farming, some poultry, some all of that. Now, when government does this to you, I think it's unfair for you to expect that post two years that you knew this program is only for two years and you had this opportunity in these two years not to build something for yourself, but expect the same government to then hand hold you through it. This is not throwing away the responsibility of government, right? But this is also putting it back on us, that we need to begin to think through what we're doing. Okay. Secondly, I'm glad that my Oshobo friend has pointed out that she was actually recorded. So for those who he? are saying we cannot validate no, no, but what, so how an individual testimony shows that it's already there. But to also come to her question around so question. the cash transfer, when we identify poor and vulnerable into the social register, the cash transfer program will come and mine from the social register and get them enrolled. So as we are enrolling, they are also coming behind enrolling for the cash transfer. So it's a going concern. If they've not started in your community, they will soon get there. Now, One year the, after. Yeah. Of those, yeah. It, 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 takes, it takes quite a number. Back to the exact question on corruption, right? You need to take care. You need to be systematic in how this cash gets across the people to avoid these bottlenecks. Okay. So there's a whole accountability structure that has been built around it. And CSO, civil society organization, have been employed or engaged who go to this community to validate that these names selected by the communities are the names that end up in the social register and are the names that are ending up in the cash transfer. So setting all of that in communities that are new including getting a payment service provider that will get them onto a payment platform. You really run out of time. So how is it, why is it so difficult to run a census? Is that easy to get yeah. data, as you said? Because when you come to census, all other different variables come to play. <laughs> and, and then it becomes muddied up. You know including I mean? politics. Politics, yes. religion, yeah. tribe, etc., etc. So it's just like our elections. You know? So once you get into census and elections, then other variables which nobody will mention but are very you know, powerful mm. come to play and then it messes up everything. Okay. okay, I'm afraid that's where we have to leave it for today. Uh, Mr. Yowa Pera of the National Social Safety Nets Coordinating Office and Mr. Norua Edokolo, Business Development Consultant. Thank you both very much. Thank for you. For Always coming a pleasure. This Thanks morning. for having us. Yeah. Sunrise will return in just a moment with another interesting conversation. Do stay with us.